This video is made for educational purposes. This video contains sensitive content which some viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Ireland's history holds painful stories. Today we look at multiple deeply disturbing revelations. Behind institution walls, a heartbreaking tale has unfolded. In Tune, County Galway, Catherine Corliss uncovered a shocking truth at the Bon Secours mother and baby home. In her search for answers, she discovered 796 death certificates for infants, toddlers and children who perished between 1925 and 1961, their lives marked by neglect and suffering. But what she found next was beyond comprehension. Their tiny remains, devoid of coffins, discarded in a sewage system their stories silenced for decades. This discovery, echoing the tragic tales of countless others across Ireland, illuminates a dark chapter in the nation's past. As we delve into the depths of this heart-wrenching history, we confront not just unmarked graves, but the very essence of human dignity denied and lives erased. My purpose here is to raise awareness and advocate for positive change. My purpose is not to offend or upset anyone or to incite hatred. Join me as we uncover the hidden truths of Ireland's mass unmarked graves, remembering those whose voices were silenced, but whose stories demand to be heard. Welcome to A Drop in the Ocean. Let's dive in. Between 1922 and 1998, approximately 90,000 unmarried expectant women were confined within institutions in Ireland. Following birth, these women's infants were consigned to the care of the religious orders vested with authority. We have known for a long time from survivors of these institutions, where babies were taken from their mothers, not always with the mother's voluntary consent, that these were yet another huge atrocity we own in this country. There is so much to the whole saga it is difficult to summarise. As with all our past institutional abuses, the survivors themselves are the very ones we need to listen to to fully understand the truth of what happened. In the following clip from Now This News, which is linked below, survivor Peter Mulryan, who was born in the Besborough Mother and Baby Home, wants to find his sister, who was also born there, with survivor Anne Corrigan, who wants to find her two brothers, who were also born there. I want them to, t to tell the truth, be honest for once in their lives. We have to bring down the government, we'll bring it down. It's only starting. We're neglected, no love shown whatsoever. Uh, it wouldn't have been done to animals while we had to suffer. Babies crying, crying, or, or through the night. Why? Because they were uncomfortable, they were neglected, starved, and cold. No loving care whatsoever. We want to know is my sister there or not? What's the proper procedure? A DNA bank set up and mine taken, and, and all the survivors of anyone that has siblings or anyone belongs to them in there. That is a basic human right. We are not being given. You know what we expect? We expect, as we always expect, a truth, justice, accountability, resulting in prosecutions should they arise and restitution for survivors. Catherine Corliss is the woman who discovered the horror of the Tume Institution's secrets. Catherine has also taken part in documentaries and interviews. She has fought hard to get the Tume babies out of the horrific place they were discarded. So the following information is what I have extracted from what Catherine has said publicly about her findings and concerns. In 2013, Catherine Corliss in Tume, County Galway, having completed a course in history, decided to do a research essay on the Bon Secours sisters who had run the Tume mother and baby home from 1925 until 1961. During researching for this essay, Catherine went to the Births, Deaths and Marriages Office in Galway to find out how many children died in the institution. Here she found 796 death certs for infants, toddlers and children, but Catherine could not find any burial records or any medical records. The cause of death listed on the death certificates included many treatable illnesses such as laryngitis, ear abscess, marasmus. It's noteworthy that for each child in these institutions, the religious order received funding from the state. 
Catherine had heard locally of two young boys who had been playing on the grounds following its closure in 1961, while the property had been left fallow for around 10 years. One day during the 70s, while the boys were playing on the grounds, they came upon a cracked slab of concrete in a corner, so they pulled it back, only to find a pile of little bones, including little skulls. Little did they know they were among Ireland's secret disappeared babies. On the discovery of tiny little bones hidden in this hole, they had told people about this. A local priest came and blessed the ground. The hole appeared to then have been backfilled. A housing estate was built around it. No further action was taken. The remains were put down as famine babies. Knowing this further encouraged Catherine Corliss to find out what the suspicious circumstances were to this whole tragic saga, so her investigations continued. To Catherine's horror, further investigations led to the discovery that these babies' remains were apparently discarded in a sewerage system across 23 sewage tanks within the system on the grounds of the Bonsecours Sisters Institution. There were no coffins. The babies were lying one on top of the other. Catherine Corliss went public with her findings, but was met with resistance from church, state and the locals, local businesses in particular. The Chewing Babies scandal broke in the media in 2014 and shortly afterwards went worldwide, with Catherine receiving accusations of being a liar and attention-seeking. It was called fake news. The origins of these institutions trace back to the 19th century, as explained by Lindsay Ernaburn to Euronews, a professor of Irish gender history at University College Cork. Following Ireland's independence from Britain in 1922, these institutions fell under the sway of religious charities, both Catholic and Protestant, funded by the state depending on the numbers confined. James Smith, a professor of English and Irish studies at Boston College, highlighted that the Catholic Church and the Irish Free State assumed roles as the nation's moral custodians. With 94% of the population practicing Catholics, the clergy's doctrines on sexual morality profoundly shaped societal norms. In this environment, premarital sex and pregnancy outside marriage were condemned, leading to severe consequences for women who found themselves pregnant, even in cases of rape or incest. Unwed pregnant daughters were perceived as bringing disgrace upon their entire families, often resulting in them being taken away, sent away or leaving themselves with no possible alternative options. Despite the church's claims that these facilities offered refuge to unmarried mothers, Erner Byrne noted that women were admitted to these institutions for diverse reasons. Ultimately, this system of female confinement aimed to control female behaviour in various ways, not only related to motherhood, but also other aspects of women's lives, she explained. Pregnant women and girls as young as 11 years old, even though the age of consent was 16, spent six months to many years within these walls following the birth of their child. It was common for an unwed pregnant girl or woman to be sent to one of these institutions for a term of two years. Some girls and women had fled to Britain to have their child there, but were returned to Ireland's mother and baby institutions. Some women entered from other institutions, such as Magdalen Laundries or industrial schools. Some women also exited to other institutions, like Magdalen Laundries, as we saw in my series on Ireland's Magdalen Laundries. In some tragic cases, some women were detained for even longer periods. The Mother and Baby Homes Commission, which I will explain, uncovered distressing records, revealing that women admitted to some of these institutions never left, with one witness telling them she had witnessed a woman fall to her death from a window trying to escape. Bethany Mother and Baby Home was located in Blackhall Place, Dublin, between the years 1922 and 1934, and in Orwell Road, Rathgar after that. It was a Protestant institution. In 2010, Head of Journalism and Media at Griffith College in Dublin, Niall Meehan, discovered the bodies of 222 infants from Bethany Home in a mass unmarked grave in Dublin. In April 2014, in the Irish Examiner, Claire O'Sullivan reports, Monument to Bethany Home's 222 dead children unveiled. As a monument is unveiled today to the 222 children who died at a Protestant children's home and were buried in unmarked graves, survivors of the home have pledged to continue their fight for justice. It will be a day that we will always remember. We have been 16 years seeking acknowledgement for what was done to us, said Mr. Lanster.
To help fund the memorial was the right step on the behalf of the department, but we want them to know it is only the first step. The state had a duty of care to us, yet we suffered enormous abuse and that must be acknowledged. Derek Leinster, born in the Bethany Institution in 1938 and chairman of the Bethany Home Survivors Group, The scandal began to reach far and wide. On June 5, 2014, CNN headlines, anger grows over reported mass grave of children from Irish unwed mother's home. Outrage over the reported discovery of the bodies of almost 800 children at a former home for unmarried mothers run by nuns in Ireland prompted calls Wednesday for a full investigation. Sergeant Brian Whelan in the press office of Garda Ireland's National Police told CNN there was nothing to suggest any impropriety and that police are not investigating the matter. Catherine Corliss's research on the tomb site, publicised by Alison O'Reilly, a journalist at the time for Irish Mail on Sunday who covered the scandal during this memorial dedication, led to global news. Reports of the mass grave containing 800 babies in a septic tank. These allegations, sparking international outrage, pressured the Irish government to launch an investigation following a preliminary police inquiry. Local Gardaí initially surmised that any bones on the site likely dated from the Great Famine in the 19th century. These are historical burials going back to famine times. There is no suggestion of any impropriety and there is no Garda investigation. Also, there is no confirmation from any source that there are between 750 and 800 bodies present. The Garda were later asked by Minister for Justice to investigate and issue a report on their findings. In February 2015, as a result of the Garda investigation into the tomb site, a commission of investigation into Ireland's mother and baby institutions was established. It would take almost six years for the report to be published. The CLAN project is a collaboration between global law firm Hogan Lavas and two voluntary organisations, Justice for Magdalene's Research and Adoption Rights Alliance. The CLAN project played a vital role in uncovering Ireland's mother and baby home's legacy. They offered free legal support to those sharing their stories with the Commission of Investigation. Going beyond the Commission's focus on 18 institutions, CLAN identified over 170 entities involved in the lives of unmarried mothers and their children. They gathered witness statements from anyone linked to Ireland's adoption and boarded out system, creating a comprehensive historical record. This inclusive effort supported survivors and contributed immensely to the accurate historical account. CLAN's website is on screen and will be linked below. CLAN tells us, Witnesses who gave evidence to the CLAN project offer compelling evidence of gender and socio-economic discrimination, stigma, racism, forced adoption, illegal adoptions, arbitrary detention, forced labour, physical and psychological abuse, punishments, neglect, including medical neglect and the deaths of infants in mother and baby homes and related institutions. In the shadows of the mother and baby homes, a sinister underbelly thrived, sustained by the labour of the vulnerable and the innocence of children. Within those walls, a cruel business was conducted, exploiting the labour of the inmates who were forced into laundry work, clothes making, farming, domestic work and jewellery making, among other things. Lindsay Erner Byrne described it as an untapped labour force without rights, highlighting the immense financial gains, though hard to quantify precisely. But the horror didn't stop there. The mother and baby homes also became testing grounds for unscrupulous vaccine trials. A staggering 43,000 children in Ireland became unwitting participants in these experiments. That is another story which we will get into in a future episode. In the subsequent years, between 2016 and 2017, a series of excavations took place at the tomb site. Inside 20 chambers of a disused sewage system, a multitude of tiny, innocent bodies rested, their lives extinguished while the home still operated, a heartbreaking testament to the horrors endured. In March 2017, the Commission completed a test excavation of the tomb site. In the journal Sinead O'Carroll reports, remains of young children and babies found in sewage chambers at Tume Mother and Baby Home. In a statement, the Commission said it is shocked by the discovery and its investigation is continuing. In this article, Sinead O'Carroll posted a notice from the Commission which said in part, in the second structure, significant quantities of tomb remains have been discovered in at least 17 of 20 underground chambers, which were examined. 
A small number of remains were recovered for the purpose of analysis. These remains involved a number of individuals with age at death ranges from approximately 35 fetal weeks to 2 to 3 years. Radiocarbon dating of the samples recovered suggests that the remains date from the time frame relevant to the operation of the mother and baby home, operated from 1925 to 1961. Further scientific tests are being conducted. In 2018, the journal Aoife Barry reports, dead from malnutrition and heart failure, 58 more children identified in unmarked graves in Dublin Cemetery. January 2021, RTE, Oliver Keneally reports, appalling level of infant mortality in Mother and Baby Homes Commission. The Commission of Investigation has said it found an appalling level of infant mortality at Mother and Baby Homes. In its long-awaited report, it said the proportion of women admitted to such homes in Ireland was probably the highest in the world in the 20th century. It said in the years before 1960, mother and baby homes did not save the lives of illegitimate children. In fact, they appear to have significantly reduced their prospects of survival. In October 2018, the Irish government committed to a complete excavation and exhumation of the tomb site, announcing that it would introduce legislation to facilitate a full excavation of the mass grave at the site in tomb and for forensic DNA testing to be carried out on the remains at a cost estimated to be between 6 and 13 million. After enduring the agonising wait, after five interim reports, the report finally being published on January 12th, 2021. On January 13th, the Taoiseach issued a state apology in the Doyle to survivors. This significant report caused outrage, but also shed more light on this troubling past, revealing a painful history where single mothers faced abuse from everyone. What made it even worse was the active involvement of the state, which not only regulated, but also funded these institutions, perpetuating the mistreatment. The report found around 9,000 children and 200 women died due to these terrible conditions. The unusually high number of deaths was known to the authorities at the time and was documented. These death rates were much higher than those in the general population until the 1980s, with the report stating the 16 deaths of women from infectious diseases reflects major shortcomings in these institutions that were also responsible for many infant deaths. Many people were angry and offended with the report, as for one it lacked the essential witness testimony which had been legally gathered, sworn in. We know in this country of all places, from our huge past institutional abuses, the words from the survivors themselves is what we have gotten the truth of our horrifying past abuses from, and the conclusions reached in the report appeared to omit this, just as with the report I went through in my series on the Magdalene Laundries. Again, history has been written. There's a very interesting and informative video on YouTube called Mother and Baby Homes in Ireland, What Comes Next? by Galway International Arts Festival, which I will link below and I highly recommend it to anyone who likes to know the truth of these injustices. Upon the publication of the report of the Commission of Investigation into Mother and Baby Homes, the Bon Secure Sisters who had run the Tomb Institution issued a full apology. Our sisters ran the St. Mary's Mother and Baby Home in Tume from 1925 to 1961. We did not live up to our Christianity when running the home. We failed to respect the inherent dignity of women and children who came to the home. We failed to offer them the compassion that they so badly needed. We were part of the system in which they suffered hardship, loneliness and terrible hurt. We acknowledge in particular the infants and children who died at the home were buried in a disrespectful and unacceptable way. For all that, we are deeply sorry. We offer our profound apologies to all the women and children of St. Mary's Mother and Baby Home, to their families and to the people of this country. Healing is not possible until what happened is acknowledged. We hope and we pray that healing will come to all those affected, those who are living and those who have died. We hope that we, our church and our country can learn from this history. People wondered, are there more mass graves in Ireland? Sadly, the answer was yes. One thing the report did give us is acknowledgement that there are several burial sites hidden near old institutions across the country. The government and the commission wanted to find out more, but it wasn't easy. They asked the church for burial records, but there were challenges. The church said they didn't know where the babies had been buried, records were lost or didn't exist, making it difficult to uncover the truth. 
According to the Commission, 262 deaths of infants and children were identified in Bethany Home. Burial records for 235 were located for Mount Jerome Cemetery, so where are the remaining 27? This is concerning. Amidst this obscurity, a tragic tale unfolded at the Besborough Mother and Baby Institution in Cork. More than 900 innocent souls met their fate within its walls. Yet, the Commission, in its exhaustive search, could only establish the burial places of 64 of these children. A painful reality dawned upon the survivors and campaigners. The ground of the Besborough Institution, where these lives were laid to rest, remained untouched, unexcavated, a silent witness to untold horrors. 836 remain lost. This is concerning. April 17th, 2019, Irish Examiner Conal O'Farty reports, burial place of over 800 children who died in Besborough unknown, Red Commission's findings on mother and baby homes. The burial place of over 800 children who died in the care of Besborough mother and baby home remains unknown, despite extensive inquiries and searches conducted by the Mother and Baby Homes Commission. Among the approximately 900 children who died in Besborough or in hospitals after being transferred from Besborough, only 64 burials could be established between 1922 and 1928. Out of these, 53 are buried in St. Joseph's Cemetery and two in St. Finbar's Cemetery. Five other children who died after being transferred to Cork District Hospital are likely buried at Cork District Cemetery, Cars Hill, although there is no documentary evidence to confirm this. The Congregation of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and Mary, who owned and operated Besborough, has no knowledge of the burial location of the other children. Additionally, there are no recorded or certain burials for children who died in the three Sacred Heart homes. Besborough, Castle Pollard and Sean Ross. There are no plans to find where these babies were interred. This is concerning. 449 confirmed deaths of illegitimate infants and children between 1922 and 1960 in Cork County Home, also called St Finbars. No burial records for these children have been located. It is believed that they might be buried in Cars Hill Cemetery, although there is no documentary evidence available to confirm this. The Cork County Home and Cork District Hospital were both renamed St Finbar's in the 1950s. There are no plans to find where these babies were interred. This is concerning. 247 children died in Castle Pollard Mother and Baby Home or in hospitals they were transferred to, along with eight mothers who died from pregnancy or childbirth complications. Despite the canon law requirement to maintain burial records, 17 of 247 deaths were not registered in GRO. An affidavit from the congregation was found by the Commission to be speculative, inaccurate and misleading. The Commission believes that deceased children are likely buried in the institution's burial ground, but there is no documentary evidence to confirm this. Castle Pollard ceased to function as a mother and baby home in 1971. This is concerning. According to the Mother and Baby Homes Commission, Sean Ross Abbey did not maintain a burial register. The final report confirmed the discovery of buried infant human remains at Sean Ross Abbey during a test excavation conducted in February and March 2019. These remains were found in a designated burial ground and the report expressed confidence that they belonged to children who died at Sean Ross. However, without a complete excavation, it cannot be definitively stated that all deceased children from Sean Ross are buried in the designated area. The Commission concluded that further investigations is not deemed necessary. This is concerning. Pellettstown and the Dublin Union were part of the same institution, operated by the Daughters of Charity. The deceased children from this institution were primarily buried in the Angels Plot at Galassanedon Cemetery, with detailed records maintained there, but were also buried in other locations. 3,615 deaths were recorded by the official investigation. The burial register categorised these children as abandoned, deserted and or illegitimate. Approximately 950 children who passed away between 1920 and 1977 were sent to medical schools at UCD Trinity and the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland for anatomical studies. This practice of sending unclaimed bodies to medical schools was common until the mid-1960s. The Commission discovered that some children's bodies were transferred for anatomical studies before the mandatory 48-hour period, during which family members could claim or object to the body being used for studies. The bodies of nearly all these children were labelled as illegitimate. 
Typically, these children were buried in Glasnevin more than a year after their death. There was no specific section in the poor ground for these bodies. It was a common practice to collectively bury the remains of several anatomical subjects in the same plot on the same day. In the Glasnevin poor ground burial registry, these children were identified by the letters A.S. Anatomical subject. 513 babies are still missing. This is concerning. Although a coroner already had the right to exhume where necessary or to investigate when exhumation was impossible, in February 2022, a new bill called the Institutional Burials Act 2022 was passed, which again allows experts to exhume remains, although this bill disallows the coroner's right. In May 2023, forensic experts began inspecting the remains in June. Under the guidance of Ireland's Minister for Children, Roderick O'Gorman, a former Red Cross envoy was appointed to oversee the delicate process of recovering these long-forgotten remains, and no specific time frame has been set, leaving us uncertain about its duration. It is necessary and right that the remains in tomb are removed from the sewage system in which they were so disrespectfully discarded. What will occur with each of the remaining mass unmarked grave sites remains to be seen, whether they be memorialised, exhumed. Each and every little body deserves to be acknowledged, remembered and respected. Peter Mulryan, who we listened to earlier, survivor of Besborough and looking for his sister, spoke out again since the publication of the report. It wasn't good news. June 28, 2022, the journal Orla Ryan reports. Where is she? Survivor of Tume Home discovers he has a second sister with no burial record. The 78-year-old believes he and his siblings may all have the same father but has been unable to confirm this to date. Eater said he was initially absolutely shocked to discover he had a second sister but needs to find out what happened to her. I want to know where she is. Peter was boarded out as a child and was physically and emotionally abused. As an adult, he found his mother, Delia, who spent over 40 years in a Magdalene laundry. She never told him that he had two sisters. In recent years, he received some documents from Tuzla, the Child and Family Agency, about Delia and Marion. In one batch of documents he received three years ago, there was a reference to Delia spending time at St Gerard's, an institution for unmarried mothers and their children which operated in Dublin in the 1920s and 1930s. This was the first time Peter had heard any mention of his mother passing through St Gerard's. Peter's wife Kathleen explained, A friend of ours, a retired solicitor, was helping us look for information from Tuzla. We got some files and there was a document about his mother spending time in a mother and baby home in Dublin. Peter had never heard about this before. Bridget was born in Hull Street Hospital in Dublin on October 29th, 1936, before being transferred to St Gerard's. She was born healthy but, according to her death certificate, died less than a month later on 20th of November 1936. The reason for her death is listed as debility. This term, meaning physical weakness, was commonly used as the cause of death for children at the time. Peter had hoped that the commission of investigation into mother and baby homes would shed light on practices in St Gerard's. However, in his final report in January 2021, the commission said it was unable to access files related to St Gerard's as they were part of a wider body of records related to St Patrick's Guild, an organisation that oversaw both legal and illegal adoptions. They have not been able to locate a burial record for Bridget to date. Peter has also never found a burial record for his younger sister, Marion. She may be buried at the site of the former mother and baby institution in Tume but he believes she may have been incorrectly registered as dead and that she might have actually been illegally adopted to the US. And again, in July 2022, Peter told the journal in a letter received by Peter on July 29th, the Tuzla FOI decision maker said, an extensive search was completed of electronic databases and document management systems held by Tuzla to include the Mother and Baby Home Commission database and St. Patrick's Guild records. I wish to advise that Tuzla has not located any specific records in respect of St. Gerard's home within the overall St. Patrick's Guild records which transferred to Tuzla. Two babies from the one family were born healthy but apparently died and we don't know where they are. It's very suspicious. Two babies in our family gone. It's awful, he said. With Anna Corrigan telling the journal in January of this year, 2023, 
All I hope is that the babies in Tum and all the others who have been crying out for so long will eventually be heard and hopefully we at the Tum Babies family group will learn the fate of our siblings before we too pass. As you can see, accessing records here in Ireland is another big, big problem. Legally, you have the right to access your own records, but actually you don't. I've only scratched the surface here of so, so many different things. And while mentioning some of the sites investigated by the Commission, there are countless more places untouched by their inquiry where unmarried mothers and their children suffered. These places were intricately woven into the adoption, boarding out, orphanage system. And tragically, many infants and children lost their lives there. Yet these places remain uninvestigated. And as of now, October 2023, there are no plans to rectify this. It's heart-wrenching for the families of these innocent children who don't know where their loved ones rest. It's a collective tragedy, a stain on our shared history, and it needs to be rectified. These babies, their mothers, they committed no wrong. The system, however, failed them catastrophically, miserably, because it was a miserable system. Our journey doesn't end here. There's so much more work to be done. I will keep you updated on any progress. Subscribe and don't forget to enable notifications by clicking the bell icon. Stay informed, stay vigilant. Thank you for watching and caring about those who can no longer speak for themselves. Take care of yourselves and each other. Thank you, good luck and bye bye.